Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the launch of the Tradable Energy Quotas Report. Um, the reading inside you will note that it's two, there are two authors to this report. Uh, sadly, David Fleming is no longer with us, and we will hold a minute's silence for him June, at the end of Sean's presentation. Um, I'm pleased, actually, to be putting this forward. I think that the need for a rationing system between nations and um, then within nations will become obvious when we look at the capital transfers between the OECD nations and the Middle East at a later stage. There's a, there's a point at which you can not sell anything more to the Middle East to get your oil. And whether people see it as a fringe idea or not, the, the mathematical realities of the capital transfers will drive nations into concluding that we, we can't keep on doing this. And if oil prices are around about $200, you know, we, we already face a lot of problems um, from the current financial situation, which in my view has four causes, two relating to banking, one relating to the fiscal deficit in this country, and the other one relating to the spike in oil prices, because as everyone's seen, spikes in oil prices cause recessions. And it's a mistake to think that there is only one cause for the general financial problems of the West, uh, and one of the causes, one of the four causes in my view, is actually to do with spikes in oil prices. Uh, to me, the, the fact that at some stage the global production of oil will peak is a given. The only question then is uh, when you can calculate where that is going to be. And some of the best work on that, in my view, has been done by Chris Schabowski, who, what he does is he takes the projects, project planning, and looks at flows of hydrocarbons over a five-year time scale, because the large projects, even if it's on the Athabasca tar sands or wherever, take up to five years to come in. So you can see where things are going. And that generally points to a sort of plateauing effect in this decade, um, which is what I personally would expect in terms of um, the, the oil supply. I don't expect it to go sharply down. I expect it to sort of plateau and bump along. But the economic damage will be incredible. And the people who will suffer most in that are those the financially weak. And that's really where you come down to having a rationing system that is driven not just by money, but also by some form of equitable system. And then there, there, there is a simple argument for government, and the argument goes as follows. If at some stage you're going to have a rationing system, or may even have a rationing system, the longer you take over implementing it, the better because that way you can do it more effectively. And it's quite feasible for ev everyone who's got a credit card to have two accounts, one for their trade or energy quota and one for money. But if you're going to do that, and so when you pay, you pay two numbers, that has to be built into the computer systems over a period of time. And so any government worth its salt internationally should look at international payment systems to allow two numbers to, 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 to be passed, because if you start doing that now, um, it can actually be implemented in time to be useful. Otherwise, you end up with two different cards, one for your tradable energy quota or carbon quota uh, and, and one for money, which is not a very efficient way of doing things. So um, I don't intend... What time are we at now? Um, I don't intend to, end to fill, my, fill my whole 15-minute slot, and I intend, therefore, to move on to Sean Chamberlain, who will explain tradable energy quotas with his slides and the need for safeguards on personal energy security. Yeah. Thanks, John.